It is May 28th, 2013, and we are coming to the close of Asthma Awareness Month, which ran through the month of May. The reality is, asthma can be an extremely variable disease, and 24 hours in my life might not look like 24 different hours in my life, and it certainly won't look like 24 hours in the lives of some of my friends who I share this disease with. So it's about 1 o'clock p.m., so I'm going to capture from 1 p.m. today to 1 p.m. tomorrow and put it up on YouTube to show you what 24 hours in my life with asthma could be like. <coughs> so do you hear that? That is me coughing. You see that? That is the freaking rain. So there are about 8,000 things that can possibly trigger your asthma, and for me, one of them is the freaking rain. Otherwise, I'm also not looking forward to going out in that rain to walk to work in, you know, like, an hour. <coughs> so this is the point where we uh, take some Ventolin to deal with this crap. It's... 1.22 p.m. right now, and I took my morning medication at about 7 o'clock, so could probably go for some Atrovent, too. So this is my bathroom, and this is where the uh, mirror mantras live for the week, and then they get demoted to over here. I just thought that might be mildly interesting. This is where all my asthma crap lives. Um, you got some Atrovent, which I'm going to take in a moment. You got some iron pills. Those aren't asthma related. Got some nasal saline, you got some Q-Bar, you got some Zenhale, you got some Nasonex, and that's all the crap that I take to keep my lungs working properly. So it's a little after two o'clock and I'm about to head back off to work. Um, and I am going to take some Atrovent because that's how we do. I never actually use my hand to get the um, cap of the spacer off. This is a spacer. Mine's pink. And basically all this thing does is make sure all the medication gets to your lungs. It doesn't get all stuck in the back of your throat and in your mouth and all that bad crap. <sighs> and if you hear the whistling noise, that's not good. That means you're breathing in too fast. So that's not good. And then I'll do that again. Asthma perk, we get mail from the Asthma Society of Canada. Napa accountability report. I have no clue what's going on out here. It's not actually even raining anymore, it just still kind of looks miserable. The Asthma Society of Canada has a program called the National Asthma Patient Alliance, also known as Napa. So here's a fun fact about me. Uh, I'm a little bit scared of geese, so I just ran past those geese over there. I tried clapping, so I'm just clapping makes them go away. It didn't work this time. So I am part of the Asthma Society of Canada's National Asthma Patient Alliance Executive Committee, which means I get lovely mail from my friends at the Asthma Society of Canada. And uh, it's a really great group. We do a lot of programs like Team Asthma and work on new programs and help to engage patients with their own care. Going to work. Done work, waiting for the bus. Going for coffee at Starbucks with my friend Lori. Time for the evening process. The inhaler goes on the counter while you sleep, so you know where it is. Good morning, it is now Wednesday, May 29th. I just spent the last 7 hours and 59 minutes in bed, and I don't have to go to work till 2 o'clock, so I got lots of time to do stuff. So it's now about 10.30, and I'm trying to motivate myself to work out. I woke up earlier than I had anticipated that I would, which is fine. But now I've just been sitting around and not doing anything productive with the extra time I have today. I guess first order of business would be to take some medication though. I can actually check my peak flow, which I never tend to do anymore, and see where that's at. <laughs> 393. 403. That's better. 395. So we're at uh, 403. 3.08 FEV1. Bing! All that thing does is measure how fast the air comes out of your lungs, basically, and if the number is lower, that means there's more obstruction in your lungs. Exciting! So, I think 
what I will do is short walk now and then walk to work later. So at least if I get distracted and I don't walk to work, then I uh, have done something today. Still this lingering cough from yesterday. I don't like that. I mean, I don't know why I'm surprised though, because I cough pretty much all the time, but I still don't like it. As always, I got distracted. I'm now mapping out a short route to do this morning. Um, I should probably go take my medication before I go map this out because I have to wait for it to kick in anyways. See, this is this is the joy of the uh, lovely world of attention deficit. Hooray! Step one, Ventolin. Make sure your lungs are nice and open. It's a bronchodilator. It does good things. Yay! We uh, rock this one preventatively about 15 minutes before we go out so that things stay nice and open in there. So that's good. Um, if I'm going out for any longer than, you know, half hour or so, I usually do nebulize the treatment, but one, I'm lazy, and two, uh, right now I'm not going out for that long. So I'm going to skip that step and we're just going to do the inhalers. And we'll repeat that a couple times. I'll probably do about four puffs from this thing just because I'm not doing a nab. Next up, we do some Asher event. This is also a bronchodilator, but it does stuff differently. Fancy. Next up, we are taking some Zenhale. This is a combination inhaler with both a bronchodilator, a long-acting bronchodilator that lasts for about 12 hours, and an inhaled corticosteroid to work on the inflammation in your lungs. Yay! And we do that times two. And then finally, after all of that has been done, we take some QVAR, which is also an anti-inflammatory medication called an inhaled corticosteroid. Hooray! Remember, my friends, the whistling noise from the spacer. Not good. Now we visit Map My Walk to map a walk. So now I have a 3.07 kilometer loop mapped out. It should probably take me less than 35 minutes, but I'm really out of shape. I'm rocking the old school Team Asm shirt. Um, so I've taken a bunch of crap with me. Um, of course, the important things. We have the iPod, and we have the Blackberry. Um, I'm going to take the video camera with me this time. And of course, we have to take our good old friend, the Ventolin. And um, apparently I'm all about product promotion, because this is my favorite thing in the world. This is the tummy tote from Tally Gear, and you can fit all of your junk in there. Also, you can put your stuff in there, not just your junk. Then you don't have to think about it because it's just all attached to you. I totally love the stuff from Tally Gear, so I think you should go visit my friend Donna and check it out. One, glycerin just came on my iPod, and if you know glycerin, you'll know it is an amazing song. Two, having some water before we leave because dehydration is bad, but only having half a glass because having to go to the bathroom when you're out there, also bad. Three, dehydration, bad for the lungs, makes them act up more. No bueno. Little girl on a scooter just told me I was fast. I like her, I think she should be my coach. This is actually making me crazy. I'm used to walking with my Fitbit or my Garmin or something. So I have no idea how far I've gone. I know my route though, but I don't know how far I've gone. Really, this is not the most asthma friendly yes, watch the walk. Bye. And stop. Done in 30 minutes, 51 seconds. I am happy with this. That was the fastest walk I've done in a long time, and I am going to give the crit to you. So, another excellent creation from the lovely Miss Donna at Tally Gear is the Hipster Pack. And there's uh, an all brand bar in there right now. So I can put a spacer in here and a bunch of inhalers, and it's good. And usually I take this after I work out, and I forgot to do that, so we're gonna do that now. And then you pop your Atrovent in the bag. Or I do. I don't know if you do. I don't know if you take Atrovent. Oh, there's actually an inhaler in here already, so I don't really need to take this one with me. Excellent. And that's how we go to work. Carry this with you, always. So I'm nearing the end of the 24 hours that I've been capturing, and while this has been a 
fairly easy and standard 24 hours, there's really no such thing as typical. Yesterday and today will vary from tomorrow and next week. There's nothing that can be predicted. There's no way you can gauge how you're going to feel the next day. And it's always just a surprise. What ends up happening happens and you deal with it as it comes. There's always a degree of uncertainty to living with any sort of chronic disease and asthma is no exception. Above all things, if we want people to understand the impact that asthma has on our lives and become educated about it, we have to be transparent ourselves. And though people might not be interested in engaging in a scientific discussion about the pathophysiology of asthma, if they know you and they care about you, they're probably at least mildly interested in how this disease affects your life. The only way to change perspectives is to share perspectives. And in that, you might just change your own perspective too. Thanks for joining me for this 24 hours, and maybe we will do this again soon, because no two days ever look the same. Good things.